Uh, my name is Peng Wu. Everyone calls me Helen. And it's a great pleasure to do this presentation on interactive and mutual media storytelling for you. And so I will first start with a brief introduction to my professional trajectory and the biovision team, followed by the introduction of my research domain in interactive and multimedia storytelling. And finally, I will offer ongoing perspectives on my research project, which is building attention-driven 3D environments for low vision. So I had a rather uh, unusual career trajectory. I actually began in undergraduate school uh, with a focus in, in English languages and literature and a secondary focus in computer science, followed by a master's in digital contents and technologies, which is at the intersection of media studies and computer science, with a specific focus on 3D animations and filmmaking. And so this was followed by a thesis in the mimetic team of Inria Ren on the topic of cinematic discourse for interactive and 3D storytelling. And after my thesis, I pursued an ulterior position and two postdocs, one in the US and one in the biovision team here in Inria Sophia and Police. And starting from October 2020, I was recruited in a starting faculty position in the biovision team here in Inria Sophia and Police. So the biovision team has three main axes of research. The first two axes concerns the understanding of the visual system at neuronal and perceptual levels. Specifically, we are interested in both the normal visual system and also the impact of low vision conditions, such as age-related macular degeneration or DNA in French. And the understanding of these will be then used to develop technologies for the diagnosis, rehabilitation, and everyday aid of low vision patients. The domain that I work in is interactive and multimedia storytelling. And so when we talk about storytelling, there are classically two parts, the story and the discourse. The story concerns the plot, the characters, the fascinating events and the world, basically what happens within the story. Whereas the discourse concerns how the story is told, the medium, the structure, the presentation. The computational study of storytelling has scientific challenges in each of these. And my research specifically falls on the side of discourse. How can we create more engaging storytelling experiences? Specifically, my research concerns media. What are the technologies and their affordances to allow us to tell and interact with the story? Content, how can we adapt different content to various media and platforms? and user, enhancing and understanding the end user experience. And so my research in this domain began in, during my master's when we started working on this system called the theater, which is a system on unity for procedural animation and graphics generation. Specifically, we could use a high level language such as telling a character to go to a certain location, uh, do a certain animation or talk. And using uh, the theater platform, my master's thesis was on creating a graph module for interactive stories to allow authors to create non-linear storytelling experiences. Specifically, the user can make decisions on the story and the story would have to adapt according to these decisions. And we developed a two-pass differ search algorithm to filter the story graph to still enable interaction, but also maintain authorial constraints to ensure the logic of the story. And so following this, I conducted a thesis on how to plan cameras inside 3D environments to convey these stories. And this led to a project named uh, Film Editing Patterns, uh, which is to develop a constraint-based language for visual storytelling based on film practice. So film practice has had a long history of using different properties of the uh, <coughs> of, of, uh, visual arrangements uh, in order to convey emotion and story inside the film. For example, using the distance of the camera to the characters, we can move them closer to look at the emotions of the face of the actors, or we can move them further to have a more global view of the entire story. And similarly, angle can be used to convey the power or the relations between characters and the position of the characters on the screen. If a character appears right in the middle uh, facing the camera, they are very confident. Whereas if they appear on the side in the corner, 
it indicates isolation and vulnerabilities. Now, not just properties of how characters and objects are arranged on the screen, but also properties of editing. How can we put successive uh, shots in order to convey a longer sequence of emotions and stories? So the relative size of characters can be larger or smaller. smaller. The angles of, her, uh, of the camera uh, in relation to the characters convey their power relations. And also we can use position to convey affinity or discord and continuity to maintain temporal and spatial uh, logic throughout the shot or break that continuity to create a feeling of instability. And so as you can see, these visual features, size, angle, position, continuity, they are inherently linked to the way we can understand stories and also linked directly emotionally how we interpret what we see on the screen. And so using this constraint-based language from editing patterns, we can then define long sequences of style that are linked to these elements of story and emotion. So taking this sequence as example, we can have a number of same size patterns that are linked together with starting with a camera that is far from the characters, moving to a medium shot and a close-up, and define a complex pattern called anticipation that builds up emotion as the camera gradually moves closer and closer to the actors. And so the first usage of film editing patterns is to uh, create a solver by extending the North Mars Pat Screen Search algorithm in order to identify sequences of these editing styles and animated dictated film clips. And we were able to do that on films across over 30 years from different directors to visualize what kinds of editing techniques directors use to convey story and emotion inside a variety of films. And moreover, the ultimate goal was to then extend this solver into an interactive constraint solver that was integrated in a smart interface for the editing of 3D film sequence. We gave the users a sequence, an uh, animate, 3D animated sequence, and it could be cut into a number of shots. And then there's a database of camera positions that can be applied to these shots. And then film editing patterns can be applied to a specific selection of these shots. And this would be solved interactively, such that the database of camera positions would update to recommend camera positions that conformed to the constraints of these film editing patterns. <coughs> so this is the work that I conducted up during my thesis. But during my postdoc, I moved gradually closer and closer to the thematic of users. And specifically during um, my first postdoc in the US, uh, investigated a model of joint attention for automated editing. That is, we had a database of uh, um, recordings from smart meeting rooms with seven cameras from different perspectives. And we extracted the pose of the people inside these cameras and estimated their gaze directions in order to understand what they were looking at in the room. And if everyone in the meeting room was looking at a specific point, that was the joint attention of the room. And that's an ex extremely important in this to, for editing. We want to show what is the most important thing inside the meeting at any given time. And so on expert edited meetings, we trained a long short term memory neural network to select at any, any given time among these seven cameras, the one that would show the joint attention of the room. And during my postdoc in the BioVision team, we worked on accessible media design for low vision, specifically designing a new reading, uh, a new news reading experience in virtual reality to rearrange complex documents visually in a wide 360 degree space with personalized visual parameters. And so these projects gradually uh, came together to have this idea of when, uh, when it was time to prepare for a research project uh, for the recruitment last year. It, the idea came to combine attention-driven mechanisms for 3D content creation in virtual reality and have applications towards low vision. And so that's where the research project that I proposed, uh, Building Attention-Driven 3D Environments for, the, for, for Low Vision, came from. And the goal is exactly on these lines, to enable the study of normal and low vision attention using virtual and augmented reality technologies 
and propose assistive creativity tools for accessible media and content creation. And so to give you a bit of context, low vision specifically refers to visual impairments without relief from corrective lens nor medical procedures. An example is age-related macular degeneration, or DMLA in French, which can result in the loss of central vision in patients. To put this in perspective, by 2040, it is projected that over 288 million people worldwide will be suffering from low vision conditions, calling for strong needs in training, rehabilitation, and accessibility design. And I believe that virtual and augmented reality technologies offer these opportunities to create immersive environments for training and rehabilitation, and also design controlled environments for studies of user attention. And moreover, by combining technologies in 3D graphics and animations, there is a strong potential to personalize these 3D scenarios and use them for the study of user attention inside the situation of usage. And so in this context, my research project tackles four challenges. The first one is the conception of a language of 3D context that can be used to create immersive 3D scenarios. And then we can use these scenarios to study normal and low vision attention inside these immersive environments and collect multimodal attention data, such as gaze, physiology, and motion. And using this collected data, we will use supervised learning to establish evidence-based models of human attention, which can then be used, the understanding can be used to design personalized content and re for rehabilitation, training, simulation, and other applications towards low vision. And in the biovision team, already we are starting to explore projects in this direction, notably the project that I mentioned in the extension of my postdoc, to use automatic document segmentation technologies and also virtual reality to redesign newspaper reading experiences. And also using virtual reality to design psychophysics studies, that is studies of how humans react to different visual stimuli in 2D and 3D. And as a starting faculty position, I had also uh, teaching engagements within the university, and I was really lucky to be able to find a module in the techniques and modalities for interaction in Polytech. And we started to introduce a curriculum in virtual and augmented reality to let students uh, who are majoring in uh, human-computer interactions to be familiar with these new technologies for creating immersive 3D environments. And with that, we were able to have a number of groups of students working on various topics for their uh, student projects uh, throughout the year, including modeling user experience in 3D environments, study of gaze and emotion for 360 degrees content, and AI for the analysis of style and bias in visual media such as film. And this is in collaboration with many other researchers of different domains in the university. And the local environment of the University of Kodazu has really afforded these kinds of collaborations, especially that such that there is a strong interest in an axis of extended reality that brings together local collaborators in AI and multimedia, in health, neuroscience and cognition, arts, humanities, and others to bring together these experts from different domains to conduct interdisciplinary research in health, AI, storytelling, and user experience. And I think this experience has uh, really been very valuable at the beginning of my career to be able to work with people from all kinds of domains on the res a research project that also requires expertise from outside of computer science. And so in conclusion, the study of storytelling is not just linked to entertainment, but globally, it is about designing accessible media tailored to people of all needs and preferences. It is about creating content and experiences that are personalized, comfortable, and enjoyable, and also to reach out to users to communicate and to help those in need. And I think this last point is particularly important because I believe that's what storytelling is about. So thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and you're more than welcome to contact me.